as I said, start a new series entitled The Built People. Um, it is interesting to understand how people get to certain stations in life yeah. and, and how they think that those stations define who they are. People deal with and react to others as if though they personally really are what society says they are. As if they have a legitimate right to claim certain ranks and titles for themselves. This is, this is how society operates. There was even a group one time that called themselves the master race. How they claimed that, I don't know. But they did. And that's who they said that they were. And, uh, but I, I, don't, I, I don't quite buy into that concept, but it's, it's amazing how people in life come to places and positions and they actually buy into this stuff. Like uh, one group of people thinking they're better than another simply because of whatever, like where you grew up, the color of your skin, all this kind of thing. And people literally believe it and, and buy into these ideas. And, uh, and, it, and it's amazing to see that. Um, and, they re- and they really act as if though they have a legitimate right to those claims, whether it's true or not. Uh, I remember the, er- the, uh, the, um, the race that called themselves the master race. They said, well, we're going to just kill everybody else because don't nobody else really deserve to live but us. Amen. I, I, I'm sure it's demonic, and I know that's the origin of it, but it amazes me how people buy into these kind of things. Um, if left to man to decide who is who and who can do what, it would be a total miscarriage of liberties, justice, and equality. This is because man does not possess the qualifications to make these type of determinations. Man is not supposed to be saying who is who. Man is not supposed to be saying who can do what. Because there is nothing inside of man that's, that's going to allow him to be equal and unbiased and not prejudiced. And there's nothing inside of us that uh, helps man make, do the right thing, Amen. as it were. Make the right decision. Call what's what the right way. Right. It's just not in people. Amen. And so men don't get to determine who you are. That's all I'm saying. Amen. They don't get to tell you who you are. They don't get to tell you what you can do. They don't get to tell you where you can go. That kind of thing is not just, it's not in man. Uh, No matter where they are in life, they'll always put themselves over you. That's just because men are not God. And men don't have the love of God. And so therefore, men don't qualify to tell you who you are in life. Now look at 1 Samuel chapter 16. We're going to look at verse 6 through 7. I'm going to just show you this in scripture. In scripture. I'm going to show you this, this to you. Let me know when you see it. Let's read it together. Ready, read. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. The Lord had told uh, the prophet to go down and anoint him a king and stop mourning over Saul. So he's here now looking at uh, Jesse's sons and the oldest, biggest boy uh, was tall and beautiful and uh, had all of the physical attributes. And when this prophet saw him, he said, surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh at the heart. Now, aren't you glad that the Lord does not qualify us like people do? (laughs) Glory to God. Now, this this scripture simply means that man doesn't know what people are built of. Men do not know what people are built of. Every person is built out of, out of or by something or some things. Men try to determine what that something is by external things. Most of the time, people try to determine and, and deal with you and uh, treat you like something that they physically determine you to be. And that's typically, the, the, that's, the, that's the input that men normally try to put into determining who you are, where you can go, what you can have, etc. Now, that's why uh, they are always surprised. See, external, always looking at external things. That's why they are always surprised 
and shocked when that nice neighbor down the street turned out to be an axe murderer. They be on TV like, I, I didn't know. He was so nice. That's because you can't look at nobody and tell what they made of. Glory to God. Then when they get access into their house, they go down in the basement. It's all kind of plots and plans and pictures on the wall and diagrams. <laughs> How they going to blow up everything and kill everybody and take over the world. Like, wow, I thought he was just a nice little neighbor down the street. That's because we don't have the ability to say we don't know what people are built out of. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, this generation is so confused. Listen, this is how much they should be telling us anything about ourselves. This generation is so confused uh, uh, that it should never be given the power to determine anything about you. After all, listen to this. After all, this is the first generation that is confused about gender. After, what, is, what is genderless? This generation came up with that. Genderless. Okay? I'm like, okay, this generation is really confused. They really don't, they really don't have the right to tell us nothing about who we are. They, they don't even know a man from a woman. Oh, glory to God. Genderless. Okay, I'm going to solve this riddle for you right now. If you were born with equipment, you have a gender. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Glory to God. And depending on what equipment you have, it tells which gender you are. Ain't no confusion about this. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There is no confusion about this. And so I just straighten that out for y'all out there. There's no such thing as genderless. All right, look at 1 Corinthians. Look at 1 Corinthians 1, verse 27 through 29. Because what we're dealing with here, we're dealing with what are people built out of? What are people made out of? Everybody is built and made of something, right? Now, look at 1 Corinthians. You see, let me know when you see it. Ready, read. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the, the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Amen. Now what this simply means is that the father takes what man considers unworthy unlearned people and builds them into something that defies all the odds. Uh, if you knew I was talking about you, I'd have got a little bit better response than that. I said, God takes things that the world considers. I say the world considers them. That don't mean we do. But the world considers unworthy, unlearned, you know, uh, people, and he builds them into something that defies the odds. The father uses particular methods and things to build people, yeah. which, are, uh, which are all more effective when the subject's in agreement. In other words, the father builds people and he uses methods and processes that are more effective whenever the subject is in agreement. Yeah. So I want you to know that it is his intention to take people and build them and build them and build them until the world d does not really know where you come from how you came to be where you are, how you came to be what you are. He intended, he put his hands on you to build you into something that they look at and marvel at because they don't understand how to build people like God does. Hallelujah. They pick all external stuff, but God knows how to use processes to take you from the bottom and, and from low places and raise you up until they don't even know where you came from. He knows how to do it. He knows how, that's what that scripture means. I'm going to take some stuff and I'm going I'm to make some stuff. They said about Peter and them when the Holy Spirit fell. They said, these men didn't go to school. They don't have degrees. They unlearn. How is it that we hear them speaking in our languages? That's because God knows how to build men better than you. We don't have to go to your university to have the intelligence that you have. Glory to God. God knows how to build people with intelligence that's off the charts. Intelligence that can't be measured. God knows how to give men intelligence that you just know what to do, when to do it, and don't even know how you know how to do it. That ever happened to you before? 
You was just in a situation. You just knew what to do. Yeah. See, that's intelligence from another world. Amen. See, God knows how to build people. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that when he does, he's always in the building process. You, when you are in agreement with his building processes, it always works better. Amen. Now, I'm going to show you that. Now, watch this. All right. So, um, he uses words to build people's environments. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Glory to God. That's the reason why, man, I love, like prophet said, I love the environment here. Man, the Father speaks some words over us. Yes. What is he doing? He's building our environments. He's making our environments richer and richer. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. That's something you ought to praise the Lord for. Because you can't go everywhere and get your environments built by words. But the Father is building our environments with his words. It is our time and it's our turn. See, he's building the environment around us. We know whose turn it is and we know whose time it is. Why? Because he's built it with his words. He already told us what's going on with us. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Glory to God. So see, so what I'm saying is the father, he takes, he takes unusual things and builds people in order to blow the minds of people that's supposed to be so smart. Yeah, that, right. Hallelujah. He'll take an uh, 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 astrophysicist that's got a million dollar degree, Amen. a million dollars spent on their education, and he'll take somebody that used to move the garbage in the trash and move them right next door. And then they'll be looking at him like, how in the world did you get in here? Well, the Lord spoke some words over me. He built my environment with words. Ooh, glory to God. I don't know about y'all, but I hear words in my head. I hear words. Glory to God. He uses, he uses spiritual technology to build people's effectiveness. Like they don't understand why we're so effective, glory to God. They have to do certain things. They have to take earth movers and bulldozers and wrecking balls to tear walls down. We can just stand here and shout. Yeah, glory, glory, glory. <laughs> glory to God. And see, that's awesome to me. That's awesome to me. See, he, he, builds your, he builds our effectiveness with spiritual technology. Watch this. He uses seed time and harvest to build people's finances. And so your finances are not based on your job. It's not based on your education. It's not based on where you've been. Your, your finances is based on how much seed do you have in the ground. Because every seed has a harvest day. You put that seed out there today, you're going to see it again tomorrow. But it's going to have some friends with it because he's building your finances with seeds. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Watch this. He uses trees to build people's character and nature. So you had to be at the seminar to know that one. What that would mean right there. He uses trees to build people's character and nature. He uses dreams and visions to build people's ability to accomplish and achieve things through focus. He'll give us a dream and give us a vision. We stay locked into that dream, locked into that vision, and it keeps us focused. And that focus causes achievement. We achieve more with a vision than we do without one. He gives us a dream and that dream captivates us. And it makes us run and run and run until that dream come to pass. How many of y'all got a dream in the house? How many of y'all have a vision for your life? Glory to God. That means you're on your way to achieving great things and ain't nothing nobody can do about it. This is how he builds us with these things like this. Now today we're going to talk about uh, something that he uses to build people and build people every, in every case. Whether he uses... Um, words or spiritual technology, there's always something that goes with those other things every time. This is a part of the building process every time. And that is the father uh, builds people by purpose. The father builds people by purpose. So the name of this message today is I am built by purpose. Glory to God. Send it out in my I am built by purpose. Now watch this. Purpose is uh, to have as one's intention or objective. A purpose is to have as one's intention or objective. So in other words, if you have an objective, something that you're trying to accomplish, that is your purpose. Amen. All right? As, and that's the verb form of the word purpose. 
The noun form of the word purpose is the reason for which something is created or exists. That means that everything that's created exists for a reason, and that reason is that thing's purpose. Amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Now, let me give you four things real quick about purpose, and we'll be done for today. Four things about purpose. Number one, everything's true value is based on its purpose. Everything's true value is based on its purpose. That's, good. That's, good. That's, good. That's the reason why you pay more for a car than you do a bike. Huh? The reason why you pay more for a steak than you do bologna. Amen. That's right. Amen. Am I right? Yeah. Boy, I, I ain't bologna so long I don't know how to say it no more. <laughs> I don't even know how to say it no more. Yes, sir. Uh, so anyway, that's the reason why you pay more for a, bike, a car than you do a bike. Two different purposes. Yeah. Two different, if you need to get out of town, I don't want to see you out there on our phone peddling no bike. Oh, that's right. You need to get you a car. Because the sky serve your purpose a little bit better. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all understand what we're saying? So, so really, uh, everything's true value is based on its purpose. Number two, purpose establishes true ownership. What's really yours? What's really yours? What's really yours is based on what your purpose is. See, that's, that's the problem they had with Joseph. Joseph had a purpose to be a ruler. But they thought they could take his coat but they couldn't take his purpose because what's really yours is based on your purpose and because God has a purpose for your life what is yours is yours and there's nothing nobody can do with what's yours but you because what's yours go along with your purpose see so they took Joseph's coat and they threw him in the pit but they couldn't take his purpose and therefore they really couldn't do anything to Joseph because your purpose determined what's really yours. Do you know there's some things that God has for you, the Father has for you, that's strictly because he got a purpose for your life? That purpose for life has made him deposit some things in your account. And you just a few days, you just walking on your way towards getting what's yours. You just a couple steps away from some of the stuff he put in your account. Yeah, yeah, it's just a little while longer you're going to see the purpose that he had for your life. Glory to God. Glory to God. It might look bad right now, but just hold on just a little while longer. It didn't look good in the pit, but his purpose was calling him to the palace. I said, it don't look good right now, but just hold on. Just hold on. The purpose is going to speak in a minute. Glory to God. I said, your purpose is going to speak in a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hadabosha. Hallelujah. Your purpose is going to speak in a minute. Hallelujah. Number three, purpose determines who you really are. Purpose determines who you really are. Watch this. We start out talking about Saul, uh, 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 the, uh, the prophet Samuel. We went down to Jesse's house to find the father of king. And the father said, I've already, I've already, um, I've already uh, chosen myself a king. Yeah. And so Eliab, the firstborn, the big guy, the tall in stature one, was not the one. Right. Then they brought Abinadab. Yeah. And the Lord said, I have not chosen him. No. Then they brought Shammah. No. And, the, and even though the name Shammah means the Lord is there, this was not the Lord's choice. Okay. So he said, Shammah is not the one. And they brought seven sons. And the father said, I have not chosen any of them. But there's one left. Is there one left though? Yeah, but he's just a boy. He's ruddy and he's watching the sheep. He can't be the one, can he? What they didn't know is that the father was building kingly pedigree in David. While he was out there watching them few sheep. He taught him how to fight the lion and the bear because he knew Goliath was coming. How many of y'all know when you're a king, you got to be able to whoop them devils whenever they jump up? And so the father was building kingly pedigree inside of him while he was out there watching the sheep. Because your purpose says who you are, not who people say you are. They call David ruddy. They say he's just a little boy. He's just a youngster. Uh, the, uh, the, the brothers, when he came out to the battle, the brother said, what you doing out with your little man himself? Where you left them little sheep at? Where you left them little sheep at you're supposed to be watching? People always try to put you in your place, but they don't know your place because they don't know your purpose. 
Your purpose defines your place. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Yeah, see? So, 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 um, so now you know why you have been in the background. He has been building you for your purpose. Because your purpose is more important than what you think you should have accomplished by now. There are some of you that believe that I should have been doing this by now. I should have been there by now. I, my life should have been forward by now. The Father don't care nothing about where you think you should be and what you think you should have accomplished because he got your purpose in mind and your purpose to him is more important than where you think you should be. That's why he kept you right in the background getting you ready. But I came to tell you that it's time. I'm going to say that again. It's time for you to come to the forefront because it's time for your purpose. It's all right that it's taking a long time. It's all right that it's taking a long time. It's all right that you're 50 years old. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's time for your purpose. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I, yeah, yeah. Everybody said you should have made it a little further than this by now. Yeah, they talked about you for moving. Yeah, they said you, know, you got to start all over. All that kind of stuff. All a part of the preparation. They don't know that God been building you since day one. He's had his hand on you since you were in your mother's womb. He had a plan for you for day one. He has never abandoned his plan for your life. He's been working on you every day, every day, every day until it was time for your purpose. Hallelujah. And it don't matter what people think about you. And it don't matter where you came from. And it don't matter how you started out. And it don't matter the mistakes you made. So what? Everybody made mistakes. They don't have nothing to do with your purpose. Your purpose is still in effect. You are still on time. You are going to get to the destination on time. You are not going to be late. I don't care how old you are. Glory to God. We ain't getting no older. We just getting better. We ain't even hit our prime yet. It's time to go. It's time to go. I said it's time to go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor I've been cooking. Baking in the Father's oven. But it's my time. And it's my turn to come out now. Hey. Tell him it's time for my purpose. It's time for my purpose. Hmm. I was telling the father, you know, I was telling the father, you know, I was telling the father, because he didn't know this, he didn't know this. I had informed the father that I am way, way, way too intelligent to only have accomplished certain things in my life by now. I was telling him, this should have been done by the time I was 25. And he said, that's the reason why you gonna stay in the oven a little while longer, because <laughs> you got some more development to do. Glory to God, <laughs> Hallelujah! Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm just telling the truth of myself. I, I, you ain't got to tell why you were still in the oven this long. I'm just telling you why I was in there, and I want to tell the Lord what's gonna happen. See, which is proof I wasn't ready to come out. Anyway, it's time. Amen. Hallelujah! That's number three. Number four, last one. Purpose is the EPA. Environment Protective Agency. That's what purpose is. You need to understand what purpose is. Now today, we're not going to get done with this. We're just going to lay a foundation. We'll pick it back up at, at, at midweek service. And, and I'm going to give you some real important details about purpose. We're going to give you some real important details about purpose and retain the, retain the rain service, Lord's will, in, in the, in, on Wednesday. But today, I want you to just get a taste in your mouth for your purpose because everything about you is about your purpose. I want you to just fall in love with your purpose. Because when you have a purpose from God, that purpose is going to drive you and take you everywhere that he says you're going to be. And there is nothing that can stop you. Nothing that can stop you. Including time. Including time. Including setbacks. Including how long it takes. It ain't going to stop your purpose. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
purpose is EPA. It's an it's a environmental protective agency. Look at Romans chapter number 8, verse 28. I'm going to show you this scripture. You read this scripture, you've quoted it, and I'm going to show you what it really means. All right, you see it? Let's read it together. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Here's what that simply means. That means because he has a purpose for you, that's the reason why everything in your life is going to work out. Your purpose is protecting your environment. So even when they mean it for evil, your purpose is going to protect your environment. Let me say it another way. Let me put it like this. Okay, now let me show it to you like this. Watch this. Moses told the father, he told, his, he told Moses, he said, I'm going to kill every one of them, Israel. After he had broke them out of Egypt, he said, I'm going to kill them. I'm going to drop them right here in the wilderness, every one of them. Moses said, remember the purpose that you brought them out for? You brought them out to take them in. If you don't take them in, the purpose in which you brought them out for is going to be abandoned. And the father said, I can't do that because everything about them is about the purpose. So the purpose protected them. The purpose gave them another chance. The purpose picked up their children. Just like your purpose been doing. Your purpose got your children covered. That's why I said my seed going to be mighty up on the earth. Why? Because he got a purpose for my life and it goes to the next generation. Listen, their purpose protected them because if it wouldn't have, the father would have dropped them all dead in the wilderness, wouldn't he? He'd have dropped them there. But he said, wait a minute, I had a purpose. And I know when purposes are involved, Purposes are protective, environment protective agencies. When I give somebody a purpose, I got to protect them based on that purpose. That's the only reason why they went in with Joshua. Uh -huh, because the purpose covered them until the end. Just like your purpose been covering you until now. Why do you think you didn't die when you should have? Why do you think you didn't die when you was out there in the world, drunk, doing whatever you wanted to do? Because his purpose was protecting you all the time. It wasn't because you were so smooth. It wasn't because you were so bad. It was his purpose protecting you all the time. Glory to God. Thank God for purpose. Thank God for purpose. Thank God I was a base thing that he selected and picked and gave me a purpose. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham ended up in Egypt. Egypt was the worst place to be. But that's where he ended up at. It was because the father's purpose to make him rich. If the father has a purpose to make you rich, he has to eventually get you to where the riches are. He had to send him to a man that had the riches. So the only reason he was in Egypt was because of his purpose. That's why you in Florida, because of your purpose. You are in the land that flow with milk and honey because of your purpose. It's your time because of your purpose. He's hooked you up with the right people. He's made the right relationships. Why? Because of your purpose. You are not here by accident. You are not here by happenstance. You are not here because you followed us. That was your purpose that drug you from your comfort zone. And some of y'all left houses and land and people, but it was your purpose calling you, telling you, I need you to be there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's a place called there, and you have to get there where your purpose is. Glory to God. I want you to know that you have arrived. Tell your neighbor, I am at the place called there. Here is where my provision is. Here is where my purpose. It will open every door that I need open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, Lord, the Lord's purpose, if the Lord's purpose is to make you rich, he's out there raising up somebody to use their power, their ability, and their influence to help you. I promise you this, he's out there right now. He's working right now. Because your purpose dictates it. And I just want you to know, because it's time, you're about to have a meeting. There's about to be a divine connection. You're about to meet the person you're supposed to meet. 
because of your purpose. It was Joseph's purpose that protected him in the pit at Potiphar's and in the prison. They said, we're going to kill him. But all of a sudden, one of the brothers said, well, let's don't kill him. Let's just, let's just throw him in the pit. Let's don't kill him. Let's just sell him to the slave traders. That wasn't the brother. That was his purpose. Your purpose is telling people how to handle you. That, that's the reason why they're calling you into the office for the raise. That's why they're giving you a bigger raise than they've ever given anybody. Your purpose is telling them how to handle you. That's why the house been sitting there waiting for so long. Yeah. Your purpose told somebody else that ain't your house. Yeah. Listen, listen, let me tell you a testimony. Let me tell you a testimony. We were, we were looking for a place when we were uh, in Michigan. We were looking for a place for the church. And we found this building. Really, really, really ugly building. But we had a vision. We knew what we could make it look like. So when we did, we bought the building. I called a gentleman to uh, a black top the outside, black top, and come to find out he was a pastor. Listen to this. He told me, he said, you know, I built my church about a couple miles from here on that little street. I said, oh, that's your church, a brand new church right in the neighborhood. He said, yeah. He said, do you know why I built it? I said, no, I don't. He said, because I came to this building. I was going to put an offer on this building, and the Lord told me, that's another pastor's building. Leave it alone. The Lord was preserving that building for me. The Lord told him, you can't buy this one. You got to go somewhere else. This is Dr. Gallinade in them build. Just like you right now. That your, pur your purpose is preserving some things. I'm trying to tell you. Your, your, your purpose is preserving some things for you. Glory to God. Let me give you one more. We, were, we, we, had, we, had, um, we had announced that we were going to have service one morning. We had, we had found this beautiful spot. We had decorated and uh, demoed and uh, re remodeled it. Turned it into a beautiful sanctuary. We were supposed to have church the next day. One thing we forgot, we had no chairs. Amen. So we have a church the next morning, had nowhere to sit. We said, okay, we're going to have to run around and buy some, a couple of chairs. But we had spent all the money on the renovation, so we had pulled a couple of dollars together. We weren't going to be able to give about seven or eight chairs, maybe ten. <laughs> Glory to God. And we were in there working, and, and, and some guy knocked on the door. He said, um, do you guys have some cardboard that I can use Something happened to my truck. We said, sure, sure, come on. We gave him some cardboard. He got up under the truck. He came out and said, he said, oh, my oil filter exploded right here in front of the church building, and all I could do was coast up in y'all parking lot. He said, by the way, what are y'all going to sit on tomorrow? He said, my father is a pastor, and they got a church full of pews sitting under a pavilion that they want to give to somebody. This is a true story. This is a true story. And when we went to get the pews, when we went to get the pews, we had been working on building a pulpit and it was a certain color, a particular color that we never used before. It was like this really light color wood. When we got there, the pews were the exact same color. Because your purpose is preserving some things for you. I'm trying to get you to get excited about your purpose. Ah, glory to God. I'm trying to get you to get excited about your purpose. The Father has had his hand on you all your life. You know that he has a purpose for your life. You know that he does. You know that he does. If he didn't have a purpose for you, you wouldn't be here. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, consider the lilies of the field. Listen to what he said. Consider the lilies of the field. See how sharp they are? See how sharp they are? He said, now, Yet their purpose doesn't even compare to yours. Amen. So watch this. Here's the lesson he was trying to teach them. Watch this now. He was saying, if the father provides for the birds and if he provides for the lilies of the field and they have a lesser purpose than you, then how, what, how, what is he going to do for you? What he was really saying is this. Your, your purpose determines your provision. Your purpose determines your provision. That means because you have a purpose, there is provision that you haven't seen yet. But it's on the way. You want to know why? Because I'm going to get you to get in agreement with your purpose. 
And when you get in agreement with your purpose, provision is released. He said, look how important you are. Watch this. He said, the lilies of the field, look how sharp and beautiful they are. He said, Solomon, in all his glory, he's not arrayed as beautiful as one of these. He said, now you, now how important are you more than the lilies of the field? That's why I came to tell you your purpose going to keep you clean. You going to be sharp. You don't have no choice. It, he, he, he gonna, his, your purpose is going to keep you clean. No wonder you, no wonder you looking so sharp this morning. And next week you're going to look the same. And the week after that you're going to look the same because his purpose is going to keep you clean. I'm trying to release an anointing for closing here. I wish y'all would open your mouth up and say something. Now watch this. Finally, Scripture says that there is a time for every purpose under the sun. The Scripture says there's a time for every purpose under the sun. Now listen to what the Scripture says. There is a time for every purpose under the sun. Now, this means your purpose was given a time. And you couldn't leave the planet until your purpose is time. That's the reason why we've been saying it's our time and our turn right now because it's time for your purpose right now. It is time for your purpose right now. And if you really understood what I was saying, you would be praising the Lord because your, because your purpose determines your provision. Provision get released when it's time for your purpose. Let me put it another way. Joseph didn't need wealth and riches and a wife and all that kind of stuff when he was still at Potiphar's house. So that provision didn't get released till he got to, till it was time for his purpose. When he arrived at the, at, the, at the palace, it was time for his purpose, and that's when all the resources got released. Pharaoh had a dream. That was resources. Couldn't nobody interpret it. That was resources. He got introduced by somebody that was in prison with him. That was resources. So when it's time for your purpose, when it's your purpose, it's time all of the resources get released. I'm trying to tell you it's time for your purpose. Therefore, in case you're wondering why the blessings are flowing now, in case you're wondering why there's another measure of his presence, because it is time for your purpose. Woo, glory. Israel were slaves for 400 years. But they didn't need no gold when they were going to be slaves. But when it was time for them to go in, when it was time for their purpose, he said, now go get the gold. I came to make a clarion shout. Now go get the gold. Woo, I'm going to shout by myself. Now go get the gold. Now it's time for it to be released. The wealth of the rich is laid up for the righteous until it's time for it to get released. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be seated. That's the reason why, I mean, prophetess man, she opened up her mouth one day a while back and the Holy Spirit spoke through her and said, tell them it's time. It is their time and it is their turn. The Holy Spirit was announcing. You, watch this. If you have a purpose from God, you are a purpose from God. You as a purpose had a time given to you because there is time and a season for every purpose and you are a purpose. And so your time had to come at some point. Your time had to come at some point. I tell your neighbor, I've been walling in the mud for too long. I've been clucking with the chickens for too long. Now it's time to see what I was really put here for. Now it's time to see the glory of God. Now it's time to see what all this hell been about. Now it's time to see why I've been fighting so many devils. Woo, glory. Now it's time to find out what God had in mind when he put his hands on me.
Now, quickly, give me five minutes. I'll be done. The New Testament church, now I'm going to tell you what your purpose is. I told you if you have a purpose, then there was a time given for that purpose. All right? Now, do you have a purpose? Yes, you do. I'm going to tell you what it is right now. The whole New Testament church has a common purpose. That purpose is to glorify the Son of God, which in turn glorifies the Father. Okay, that's our purpose. He called all of us. In other words, let me put it to you like this. Uh, everything has a glory stage, okay? And um, if you were a farmer and you went and planted apple seeds, okay? Now, if you go plant apple seeds and you water them and you do all the stuff and you fertilize, you do everything you're supposed to do, and the tree grow, and the leaves grow, but you get no apples. That means that the glory stage of that process was aborted. Everything has a glory stage. It typically ends up with the fruit. The fruit is normally the culmination or the climax of a process. So if don't no fruit show up, then the glory part of the thing got abandoned. Is that right? Now, you and I are, since we came after Christ, and all the work has already been done, the glory of what he did with Christ is the fruit. But you the tree that wear the fruit. So your life is going to be a fruit tree with all of the blessings that the Father was working through Christ, and you're going to be the display of the whole thing. So you're going to be a billboard for the blessings of God. That's your purpose in life. You have no higher purpose. Here's the reason why. Because the father himself took his time all, out, all throughout history, waited and waited, sent Jesus in the fullness of time. And he sent him. Because he did that, you can tell that the father, this was important to him. He didn't rush and send Jesus, he waited. He sent him over time, he waited. When Jesus got here, he, went, he waited until he grew up, until he was 33 years old. Then he started his ministry. So everything in history was centered around the Father sending Jesus. So all of the work that the Father ever did from the beginning uh, was, was supposed to culminate with Jesus being the answer to what Adam did. So therefore, the fruit of Jesus has to be displayed on those who came after Jesus. That's why the fruit of the Father, the fruit of Jesus, has to be displayed on somebody's life. That's why the Bible said he called us to glory. You are the fruit. You are the glory part. And your life has to wear and display all that the father did through Christ in order to uh, legitimize what he did. If nobody wears the blessing, the blessing, if nobody wears the blessing after Christ, then everything that the father did is null and void and the glory part got uh, disannulled. But that's the reason why you're here. You're here to understand what your purpose is. And your purpose is your life is to glorify God. And you are going to have a life that glorifies God. Every part of your life is going to glorify God. Your marriage is going to glorify God. Your children are going to glorify God. Your money is going to glorify God. Your attitude is going to glorify God. That is the purpose for your life. And you have no higher purpose. So, for now. I want you to just understand this. We're going to talk more about the purpose. We're going to talk more about your purpose. I'm going to dig into it. I'm going to show you how valuable and how important it is to God the Father. He has committed some things to your purpose that can nobody take change his mind about. Man, listen, when you get in agreement with your purpose, when, man, listen, when you get in agreement with your purpose, all type of things start to happen. Now, that's what's happening to this church right now. We've been preaching and teaching the same message for years and years, but you all finally got an agreement. And because you got an agreement, now resources are being released because it's time for our purpose. This is going to be a church that glorifies God. In every way. We're going to glorify him when we praise him. We're going to When we open up our mouth and lift up our hands, we're going to glorify God. We're going to glorify God. When we, when we, when we, we're going to glorify God. Because that is our purpose. That's why he assembled us together to glorify him. Now, for now, I just want you to understand, we're going to get more into it. We're going to get more details. There's some things in the Bible that we're going to show you about your purpose that it's, it's, it's really powerful because your environment has been, been being protected 
by your purpose the whole time. It was basically the father saying, I'm not going to let you, the devil, or no other crazy person, including you, destroy my purpose for bringing you here. I'm going to preserve you until I get you to the time when it's time for your purpose. That's the reason why you're still here. Because the devil tried to take you out many, many times. But he was very unsuccessful. He didn't know that there was a hedge around you called purpose. So we're going to talk about it. But now, for now, I just want you to understand your assignment. Here is your assignment. Your assignment is to agree with this purpose that he has given your life. And don't let anything talk you out of the glory he has planned for your life. There is a glory planned with every purpose. He does not purpose anything that does not end up in glory. So your assignment, just I want you to meditate on this all week long. My assignment is to agree with this purpose that he's given my life. If he wants me to glorify him, then that's exactly what my life is going to do. If he wants my house to glorify him, that's exactly what my house is going to do. If he wants my attitude to glorify him, that's exactly what my attitude is going to do. Get in agreement with this purpose for your life because some resources are getting ready to get released to you strictly based on your agreement. Just like Mary, when the angel delivered the purpose and said, this is the purpose that, you, that the father has created you for. You're here to bear a son and the Holy Ghost is going to come up on you. He's going to be the son of God. And she said, be it done unto me. Watch this. The Holy Spirit came on her, but he had never come on her like that before. Why? She had never been given her purpose, so she didn't have an opportunity to agree with it. But as soon as she agreed, heaven moved. That's the same thing that happened to you. As soon as you agree today, heaven is getting ready to move. I dare you to open up your mouth and say, I agree. I agree. If you want to use my life, I agree. If you want me to glorify him, I agree. If you want my family to glorify him, I agree. I agree. Just like Mary, I agree. Because your agreement with his purpose for your life releases resources. It releases everything you need for that purpose to be fulfilled. And when he talks about glory, he's talking about more than you can ask or think. He's talking higher than your mind is thinking right now. 